Hello everybody, just want to show you this which I've written today and um, what it does is it scrolls Hello World across the screen so fairly basic you might think if you're familiar with web pages from the early 2000s you think what was, what's all the fuss about but uh, using this you can learn about all of these functions cars, next, unwrap, flush, thread, sleep so let me demonstrate it and then we'll take a closer look at what there we can see on the screen we've got a hello world scrolling from right to left and uh, this is compiled obviously so it's working and let me just show you something when you run it in cargo so let me just run that again you just see main rs there and code runner temporary file so when i run the code if i run uh, cargo builds followed by cargo run and then if we refresh up here so we've got target and the actual exe or the binary depending on which operating system you're on resides in the debug folder directory and it's the name of your project. So this project is called, randomly, it's called Coffee. So there we have. So if I delete that, that is my binary executable. Just going to delete that. Now if I run it again. And you see it's compiled it again. So it's done the Rust C. And it's taken the main.rs. And we've ended up with the actual binary in. It's putting it into SRC. So I just wanted to cover that difference, make that quite clear. Um, to be honest, it's not something I've overly concerned myself with just whilst starting to learn Rust. But it is important to know because you will end up thinking you've not compiled it or where is your executable. Right, so... I've had to import uh, standard io.write on line two and thread and time on line three. We'll look at those shortly. So the first thing I'm doing is creating a string. I've done hello world followed by quite a few spaces and you'll see, you can probably establish why that is when you see it running. You need a bit of white space after world um, because you want, I never wanted hello world and hello to be on the same on the screen at the same time. It just makes it cleaner, neater to look at visually. Um, on line seven, I actually was using string length for the display. And I'll show you, if I uncomment that, um, we change the duration of the scrolling. Now if I run it, it just scrolls for the length of the string times the length of the delay so that was about i think that was 1.2 seconds maybe 1.4 seconds it was probably uh 5 6 7 8 9, 11 12 13 14 15. it's probably about 16 times um not point 0.1 of a second so 1.6 seconds let's say okay the counter i've the scope of the counter is outside of the while loop. I've also made it mutable. And down here, I increment it. So I increment it. And the reason why I can increment it without borrowing it is because it is an integer rather than a string. So it's on the stack rather than the heap. Um, the 10 milliseconds, that's taken from, that's basically the default, which I copy pretty much straight from the documentation which is here and I'm using standard thread sleep and let 10 milliseconds equal time duration from milliseconds and then 10 so you're specifying it in milliseconds pretty straightforward really um, this is the interesting bit. 
while counter is less than string length, so if you want it to run infinitely, you can you can just say while counter equals true. Um, I'm just using the counter to make it only scroll once. Let ch1, so ch1 is, it's cars.next.unwrap. It's the first character, I don't know what's going on comment there. It's the first character of the string. And then I'm taking the first character, I'm pushing it. So it's pushing it to, as you look at it, effectively it's pushing it to the, the right hand end of the string. So the actual string is growing by one. And then I'm removing whatever's at index zero. So that's uh, shrinking it back down again to the same size that it was before. So if it was going from eight to nine, then I'm removing the first character, which brings it back down to eight. So we've always got a constant width. Um, this is the good bit, print forward slash R. So it's that, that is what makes the string print on the same line continuously. And to update that line, you need to use standard out dot flush dot unwrap. I think from memory, the way that the flush works on Windows is different to Unix, Linux, Mac. So I can't advise on that. So the, I'm, I've written this on Linux. Um, thread sleep, 10 milliseconds, as we've already discussed, and then the counter increment by one within the scope. So, yeah. And, um, yeah, let's run it again. Just Hello, world. And it's just run for the duration of the length of the string times 100 milliseconds. So that's kind of in introduction to putting some bits together, really. So far, the previous, the my early videos have just kind of shown single things to get on their own, sort of single concepts. So just putting some concepts together here. So we've already looked at unwrap, and we've already in previous videos we've looked at. Um, Mute. Have we looked at mute? If we haven't, I apologise. Mute basically means it's not a constant, so you can change it. It is mutable. Um, this video is kind of intended to be a video that you would do <coughs> after you've already done your kind of initial Hello World code. So, yeah, just remember to use thread time to get your delay. That's how you work with delay. So, this is kind of new ground that you won't have seen if you've watched all my previous videos and um, yeah cars and next so it's basically it's iterating through a string or returns an iterator over the car of a string slice so quite useful um, yeah push and remove um, a bit like a uh, pop in a pend in Python if you come from a Python background um, and yeah, sleep is, you just need thread, double, double colon sleep, which it's like it would, would have been, well, time.sleep in Python. So yeah, scrolling hello world. And if you like this, then um, I challenge you to go away and write this as an HTML page. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.